All right. Welcome. This is video number 59, and seeing how it's Mother's Day, I thought I would have my mama here with me. This is Mrs. Crossley, and we are outside because we're going to be talking about the sun, right? We are. It's going to be a beautiful day. It is. I certainly hope so. Come on. Sun facts. 99% total mass of solar system. That's right. So the sun takes up 99% of the solar system's mass. Oh, Honk that it. Is, Honk it. That's huge. Yep. Ball of glowing gas. Yep. So if you wanted a definition, that would be a good definition. 75% mm -hmm. hydrogen. Yep. That's what it's made up of. And 25% helium. There you go. It's like a big balloon. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Size equals one million Earths. Yeah, so it's honking. Honking. Yeah. I guess so. And it's 5,000 million years old. That's really old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to do this one again? Or you want me to do it? You go. Okay. So the sun is actually a star. Um, it is our closest star. And stars are the only things in the solar system that actually create their own heat and light. Nothing else does. Hmm. Um, we said before its definition is a giant ball of gas, and it's squeezed and held together by its own gravity. So, yep, so I always tell them bigger is better in astronomy. So the more mass you have, the more gravity you have. Oh, cool. So if you're 99% of the mass of the solar system, you have some serious gravity, hmm. which is why you can hold all the planets together. Nice. All right, you want to do this one? Well, now we're looking at the sun's characteristics. Mm -hmm. There is no solid surface. Mm -hmm. And it does rotate. Remember, rotates to turn around once. Cool. No revolution. Nope, because everything revolves around it. Nice. Pretty cool. Ordinary star. It is. It's an ordinary star. There's actually nothing too extraordinary about it. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The sun tilts 7.25 degrees. And do we remember how much does Earth tilt? 23.5. Oh, yeah. And the moon? 5. Oh, all right. Yep. And the day length? Equals 27 of Earth's. That's right. So it's pretty long. It is. To turn around once. Yep. Yeah. All right. So here's some instruments to use because I always like to ask my kids, so where, where do you find this information? How did we gather it? Right? So we use telescopes here on Earth. We can also use telescopes that are out in space. Remember to get rid of that Earth's atmosphere distortion. We have satellites, and we've collected information on all types of things, including UV and X-rays and gamma rays, and that's all part of that electromagnetic spectrum. So you and I would know visible lights on the electromagnetic spectrum, microwaves, infrared, that kind of stuff. So these are the kind of things they gather. All right, here's a video clip. Hope you enjoy it. Comes from measurements from various instruments and satellites, and they observe things such as the sun's size, mass, surface temperature, and brightness. Various instruments and satellites? What kinds of satellites? Well, there's SOHO, which is designed to study the internal structure of the sun, and ACE that studies the solar wind that comes from the sun. And then there's also Polar, Timed, and Pose that monitor how this solar wind interacts with the Earth's magnetosphere and causes auroras. And of course, we're all looking forward to the launch of Stereo, which is being built here at the Applied Physics Lab. And it will get the first three-dimensional images of the sun. So that's how you know so much about the sun. Well, satellites are very helpful, but there's still much more to learn. These are the sun's gravity information. Mm -hmm. Gravity force equals huge. Very good due to its very large mass. Yeah, remember we said more mass, more gravity. And the sun's diameter equals 864,000 miles. Yep, pretty hunky. And it keeps all the planets around it. That's right, it's gravity, that's right. Very good, you did a good job, Mom. All right, so let's talk about the sun's layers. And if you and I were hanging out and we wanted to travel through all the sun's layers, it would take us 30,000 years. Well, we'd yeah. be pretty old. Yeah, we would. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to start in the middle? Oh my goodness, what are yep. we looking at? The sun's interior? Yep. Mm -hmm. What is that? So if you were going to slice the sun in half, this is what you would see on the inside. So there's three main layers. Mm -hmm. Can't see the first one. What is it? Core. It's the core. Oh, like a that's core of the an one apple. that's really, really close to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then which one? Radiation zone. Ah, and finally, what do we have? Convection zone. Ah, well, yep. those so, are pretty cool. Yep, the only similarities we have here from Earth is Earth has a core as well, but we have the mantle and the crust. So the sun has something a little bit different. Mm. All right, let's talk about the core. Oh, let's get right down to it. <laughs> it has the most innermost layers. That's right. And it produces tons of energy. Right, for the whole solar system. The central region of sun. If you want the definition, yeah. Exactly. And the temp, 15 million K. Do you know what K is? 
K is Calvin. I knew it. Yeah, I bet you don't use that much in second grade, though. <clears throat> no. <laughs> second graders would look at me and be like, what, Mrs. Cressley? Yeah. We just don't get it. Yeah, no, so Calvin is the international science unit for temperature. And to get Calvin, you need 273 plus Celsius. Mm -hmm. So it's always pretty high. It is. Mm -hmm. And the nuclear fusion happens there. That's right. And that's a process for creating energy. We're going to talk about that in the next slide. All right. Okay. So nuclear fusion, this looks super complex, and it actually really is not. So what you do is you take a hydrogen atom and another hydrogen atom, and it's really hot. And what you do is you slam them together. And when you do that, you get helium. Ooh. Yeah. And this only happens at wicked, wicked high temperatures. And this is where all the energy comes from, from the sun. So what we're seeing out here, the sunlight today, from nuclear fusion. Um, so we talked about it, it was 15 million degrees hot Kelvin, right? And it takes about 10 billion years to collide and stick. So this is not something that happens, like, rapidly. Wow. Yeah. This is very, very unusual. You wouldn't be able to recreate this on Earth. Wow. So we talked about the core, so this is the yeah. next layer up. Wait, you want to do this one? The radiation zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I see something on there. I love it. <laughs> I know, that's why I was going to have you do it. Ooh. So in the middle layer, mm -hmm. that's exactly where it is, and it's very tightly packed gas. Yep. Yeah, so this one's much more squishy than mm -hmm. all the other ones. And it transfers energy. Yep, in the form of the electromagnetic radiation we were talking about. Or the EM. Waves, yep, if you're cool like that. And 100,000 years to travel. Yep, long time. And, oh yeah, <laughs> like PB, it's so thick. Yeah, you mm. just had your English muffin with I peanut did. butter. I yep. love it. So I always like to say the radiation zone's like peanut butter. It's so thick because it takes 100,000 years to move through. Yep, very good. So I'll do the convection zone, and I hope this is bringing back some thoughts when we were talking about convection currents, when we were talking about in the mantle. I know we got bugs everywhere around here. Um, so it's the outermost layer of the sun's interior. Uh, it has convection currents, which remember hot up, cold down, and it transfers energy. And you can see it. And remember we said to draw these accurately. Red always represents hot, and blue always represents cool. So you're going to be hot until you get cooled off, and then you sink back down. And that's exactly how that energy is transferred outward. All right, here's a quick little clip. Hope you enjoy it. The sun is our nearest star. It provides us with warmth and light. We all know that the sun is important to life on Earth, but few of us have been given a good description of the sun and its composition. Our sun is an average star, similar to millions of others in the universe, but it's a big energy machine. If you could capture the energy the sun produces in one second, that would supply the United States with enough energy for the next 13 billion years. Where does the sun's power come from? Good question. The basic energy source for the sun comes from nuclear fusion, and this is when mass particles combine and tons of energy are released. The core, or innermost part of the sun, is made of hydrogen. The sun is so dense, and its size is so large, that light released from the core takes about 100,000 years to make its way to the surface. If the sun were to stop producing energy today, it would take 100,000 years for significant effects to be felt at the Earth. Scientists think there is enough hydrogen on the sun to continue producing energy for another 7 billion years. All right, you want to summary? All right. So, oh, look at the cute little characters there. <laughs> and they're being a little fresh to the sun. Not everything we do arrives around you. <laughs> and he's like, actually. Actually, it does. <laughs> but looking at it, we have a three-way T-chart of three main layers. Which we said was the, what was the one you did in the middle? The core? Yep, core, radiation, and convection. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then we have to describe the nuclear fusion. Right, which was the energy source we talked about. Nice. And list 10 facts about the sun. Which we kind of said more in the beginning of the video. Easy peasy. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Hope you guys all said happy Mother's Day to your mother. Thanks for joining me, Mom. All right. Okay. Anytime. <laughs>